let's run over and look at, um, you know, I'll put this in a matrix first. So the matrix this corresponds to, three, negative two, four, seven. Uh, before we do anything with this matrix, let's look over at what we're used to uh, row reducing and, and getting. So this is the standard uh, form you get at the end. You get your ones down the diagonal there, uh, and that translates to x equals three. You have your x, y, and z column. So your first one, x equals three, second one, y equals two, and the third one, z equals five. Now let's look and see what happens if I erase. So if we have one less equation that we start out with, maybe we uh, get here as our final uh, answer. Now if you think about what two equations are we looking at, there is no z equation, that, that equation's gone. So we have x, we have y, but there's no information about z right here. So z is what we call free. The position that would have made it not free would have appeared here, and it would have need, needed to be a number that was not zero. So we can usually get them down to one. All right, so z is free. What do we do when we have a free variable? Uh, we're gonna let z equal t, and this is for any real number t. So we can write it like that. And then our answer down here, how does this look? 3, 2, t. All right, so that's what a uh, one free variable looks like. <clears throat> you have a variable column, but there is no uh, number or, or there is a zero down in that last position. So what would two free variables look like? it would look like one equation. Uh, and then below y would be zeros down there, if there were extra equations. All right, so we erased that equation. That would erase or eliminate this equation. What that means is there's no information about y, so y is free. And I'll use the letter S. That's usually the second most common letter to use. So let y equal s, and that's for any, any real number s. So any s in the real numbers, and that two turns into an s. It's hard to make your s not look like a five, but. All right, so we have three s t. It's a little bit strange. Uh, I don't wanna get too far into the geometry, uh, but that's a two dimensional solution, which is a plane. We actually have the same type of solution in our original system here. You don't really need to write it out in a matrix. The only reason I'm going to write this matrix down is so that uh, it has a familiar form to it. What you don't normally see, uh, I could introduce an extra two rows. Now what rows do they correspond to? They correspond to the equations zero equals zero and zero equals zero. So I didn't uh, add any useful information by putting those two rows in. The reason I did it is so that you can see this is the X, Y, and the Z column. And we're gonna look at the Z column first. Now, if you look at the Z column, these are the positions that um, have zeros in them or, or they, they have nothing in them. This four right here does not lock down the Z coordinate. So let me erase this off of here. We don't really need these extra rows. All right, so this means Z is free. Now, yes, there is a number below Z, but really that number locks down the X. It's the first non-zero number here. So it makes the X variable non-free. If I was doing row reduction, I, I would multiply this whole thing by a third, uh, and I would get uh, we get fractions earlier than I really wanted, but I did 
there's I did teach row reduction this way. So you can absolutely get this, um, which is really just your original equation uh, multiplied by a third. Oh, that's a one. Okay, so if we translate this back, this is x minus two thirds y plus four thirds z equals seven thirds. Uh, y and z are free. Z and Y are free. It doesn't matter which uh, which letter, you, uh, which variable give it uh, S and a T. So I'll just do, uh, I could, for example, I could let Z equal S if I wanted to. And all I'm going to do is now plug in T for Z and plug in s for y minus two thirds let's see that's s plus four thirds t equals seven thirds and remember what the answer is supposed to look like the first part of the answer is supposed to look like x y z equals so in this problem the hardest part is writing out your answer Well, I know y and z already. I'm gonna leave a lot of space for x because it's gonna uh, need it, s comma t. So all I need to figure out, what is s? What is x? What's gonna go right here? I have x here, I need to solve for x. So I need to get everything else out of here. x equals uh, plus 2 thirds s minus 4 thirds t. plus seven thirds. So there is the answer written out in a point notation. And I don't think anywhere I wrote this, so any S and T in the real numbers. So that is what our answer looks like. So hopefully that will help you do uh, problems where you have three dimensions but only one equation. Uh, you don't really need to write it in a matrix. You can really just, if you have one equation with three variables in it, uh, basically you can just get to the step where you solve for x.